All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the May Assessment and Accountability Webinar. Uh, this is Kevin Whitman. I'm the Superintendent's Director for Assessment and Accountability. Uh, we have a few housekeeping notes. Um, everyone who's joining today um, is muted right now. So if you have questions uh, during the presentation, you can send it to the team through the questions pane. Uh, simply type in your question and hit send. Um, if you need technical assistance for any reason, please send us a chat. Um, our team is monitoring that and we'll do our best to help. Um, we've also posted the presentation as a document so you can download and follow along. And um, as always, the presentation is being recorded and will be posted to our website along with a transcript. So let's get going. So I wanted to start with a few quick announcements. Um, first, the summary student, parent, and staff survey reports are now available in eProof. So these are for the engagement surveys that everyone participated in um, during February and March. Um, there's going to be a disaggregated version of the student survey report as well. Um, and that's going to be released by um, 525. So a little bit more time until that's available. Um, for the parent and staff surveys, you're also able to download the CSV files in eProof. Um, those CSV files are useful because they provide the free response option where the users could enter comments. Um, so those don't appear in the reports, but they do appear in the CSV files. For the student survey, um, the CSV files are available as well, but they are not built into the eProof reporting system. So if you'd like a copy of the student comments um, for any survey participants uh, for your district or school, uh, contact us and we'll set up a secure transfer so you can get that information. Uh, we also have an update on the alternate assessments for ELA and math. So as we've talked about previously, uh, we originally planned to conduct standard setting um, this summer so that we could produce scores for the new alternate assessments in these subjects. Um, however, we did have to delay that until next summer so that we would be able to produce valid and reliable scores. Um, you know, given the ongoing disruptions this year, um, that seemed like the appropriate course of action. Um, However, in the meantime, to meet federal requirements, we anticipate producing raw scores for the alternate assessments in ELA and math. And those uh, should be available in the reporting system um, at the end of the year. Um, but uh, that only applies to ELA and math. Uh, we're not going to have any scores, even raw scores, for the new alternate assessments in science. Um, and our expectation is that those valid and reliable scale scores and performance levels are first going to be available after next year's administration. So that's when you'd be looking for kind of real meaningful scores. Um, that's when we have that opportunity to conduct standard setting um, next summer. So uh, we have a, a waiver request in with the U.S. Department of Education right now for this change, but we wanted to let you know since that's evolved a bit over time. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ayaka. Hi, everyone. This is Ayaka in the accountability hat. We are hosting SAT, not SAT, ISAT IDAA participation appeals on July 12th through 23rd. The 95% requirement has not been waived, and schools are expected to meet the 95% participation rate in all subgroups across all subjects. Schools should submit an appeal for each student who did not participate in ISAT or IDAA due to documented and prolonged medical conditions. Extenuating circumstances such as breaking both hands at the same time, I see data errors and COVID-19 related, related difficulties. Submission does not guarantee approval. However, no, sub, no submission will result in no approval. Finalized participation rate will be posted on our report card site. And I sent you guys an email yesterday, but we are hosting cohort graduation rate training on May, May 24th at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Time. This training will cover calculations, basic rules, and expectations. We'll also share updates and timelines. Please register for the training using the link posted on the presentation. The training will be recorded, but I encourage you to be there to ask any questions that you may have. Any questions? I am not seeing any questions at this moment, Ayaka. Thank you. Good morning, this is Paul Kleinert. I'm your National Assessment of Educational Progress Coordinator. IDO received results for the April submission that includes March data for the monthly survey. That means we got enough responses last month. 
So there are just two more months in this uh, survey. Windows will now be May 19 through June 2nd and June 16 through 29th. I'm aware that the June submission window is problematic for most schools and I informed NCES that 62% of sampled schools are out before June 1st and 87% of schools are out before June 4th and 100% of schools are out before June 16th. They let me know that this information was very helpful. This is the most updated information. I will let you know when I receive more. Contact me at any time. And we don't have any new questions either, Paul. Thanks. Great. All right. Good morning, Idaho, and I hope you are all well on this wonderful Wednesday. All right. So individual student access score reports will be available electronically via WIDA AMS on May 26, 2021. And district and school frequency reports will also be available at that time. Uh, the individual student score reports can be downloaded in over 40 languages through the WIDA AMS portal. Test coordinators should share these reports with parents and or their guardians in a language that is accessible so that they may interpret their own child performance on the annual English language proficiency assessment. Printed access reports will be delivered to your districts between June 17th and June 21st. It is best practice to add a child's individual student report to their cumulative file. All right, as a reminder, uh, this slide describes Idaho's language instruction educational program exit criteria, and students will exit an LIEP when they attain a composite overall English proficiency level of 4.2 or higher with a proficiency level score that is equal or greater than 3.5. Students who meet the Idaho alternate assessment participation criteria and who participated in the alternate access will exit an LIEP once they attain an overall proficiency level of P2 or emerging. ELMS is scheduled to automatically update a child's English learner status on July 1st, so please be on the lookout for that. The access appeals window is scheduled to open for two weeks starting on Friday, June 11th and end on June 25th. The access appeals process provides districts and schools an opportunity to adjust their access participation rate for English learners based on specific appealable scenarios. Examples of students who would appear in the L assessment appeals application are an English learner with a partial access test, Ls with no access test results, and non-English learners with a completed access test or a partial com partially complete completed access test. Uh, more information can be found in the 2021 Access Participation Rate Appeals Web Application User Guide, and the guide can be found within the Access Participation Appeals Web Application in the IC, or the Idaho System for Educational Excellence portal, and there is a direct link to the web application on the ELPA webpage. All right, so districts should designate someone to review the information in, act, in the Access Participation Appeals web application during the window. Please make sure that this is on your calendar because we know that um, district personnel are, might be out of the office in June, so please mark your calendar. The Idaho SDE intends to use the new WIDA screener for kindergarten starting on August 1st, 2021. The new WIDA screener for kindergarten will replace the kindergarten WAPT and will be used to identify provisional ELs enrolling into kindergarten and grade one first semester. The screen, down, the screen out criteria is now being finalized and will be posted to the ELPA webpage and communicated in the various upcoming webinars and will be embedded in the appropriate guidance documents that focus on English learner identification and placement. So with that said, please join us on May 18th from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Mountain Time for WIDA Screener for Kindergarten Screen Out Criteria Review Meeting. During this meeting, participants will learn about the process the SDE went through to define the screen out criteria for the WIDA screener for kindergarten. 
The criteria will outline thresholds that first and second semester kindergarten and first semester grade one provisional ELs need to attain to screen out of LIEP services. Participants will also be given the opportunity to ask questions or provide additional input. And below is information on the upcoming WIDA screener for kindergarten webinar that is scheduled for tomorrow, May 13th, between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. Mountain Time. The Zoom webinar link is embedded into the title, or it can be found on the ELPA webpage under the Trainings tab with the webinar session. So please join us. Are there any questions at this time? There are no ELPA questions at this time, Andrew. Well, thank you so much, and have a great day. Good morning. This is Karen Striegel, and I bring you greetings from the alternate universe. First, this is your final reminder that today, May 12th, is the deadline for ordering paper test materials. You must complete and submit the paper materials order form by the end of business today. You will find the link to the paper materials order form on the ISAT portal homepage near the top right hand column. The paper test window closes on Friday, May 21st. That leaves only seven more days after, day, after today to administer paper test forms. Now, if you read the last two editions of the alternate assessment, sorry, if you read the last two editions of the assessment and accountability newsletter, you may have noticed my tables and graphs that summarize the progress we are making towards completing the Idaho alternate assessment. The graph here, the graph here adds data as of May 10th to the previous data for May 6, April 16th and April 30th that was included in the newsletters. I am not going to read the entire graph, but I will cover the data as of May 10th. Teachers have completed the Learner Characteristics Inventory, or LCI, for 80%, 86% of students coded for the alternate assessment in TIDE. 73% of students coded for the alternate assessment have completed their ELA alternate assessment. 69% of students coded for the alternate assessment have completed their math assessment. 72% of students coded for the ALT assessment have completed their science. A total of 71% of Idaho alternate assessments have been completed based on the number of students coded for the alternate assessment in TIDE. Schools are making good progress towards administering the Idaho alternate assessments to qualifying students. You have seven days left to administer the alternate assessment fixed form with printed response option cards. That's part of that paper test window and 12 days left to administer the plain Idaho alternate assessment. Keep breathing. Don't hesitate to contact me if you have any issues. Hey everyone, uh, Kevin Chandler here at the department. A few updates for science. So remember the science ISET are required for students in grades 5, 8, and 11. The testing windows for in-person, online independent field test, and the remote online fixed form both close on Friday, May 28th. Also remember that for science ISAT, there are no paper pencil and no Spanish translations because we are administering an IFT. Remember the grade 11 science ISAT has replaced the biology and chemistry EOCs. There's no makeup testing from last school year. And because this is an independent field test, there will be no individual student reports or reported scores from this year's science ISAT. Keep in mind that is the SDE's expectation that most students will test in person and the remote administration will be conducted for extenuating circumstances. Also recall that for the in-person online IFTs, they are on their own branch of the TA test tree. And that for the in-person administration, a student can only use the Idaho Secure Browser, take the ISAT, Science Summative. The remote testing window also closes on Friday, May 28th. Students in grade 5, 8, and 11 who are in districts that have received approval to administer the ISAT summative remotely will take these online fixed forms. The expectation is that most students will test in person, and therefore these remote online fixed forms will only be used in situations where the district is approved to administer summatives remotely. The remote online fixed forms are on their own branch of the TA test tree. As you can see here, the remote fixed forms are on the remote ISAT Summative Science Branch. From there, a TA can take the 5, 8, and or 11 science fixed forms to include in the test session. And just like the in-person test, 
students have to use the IDO Secure Browser to access the remote ISET summative science test. As you're wrapping up science ISET testing for school year 2021, do not forget that the test improprieties and monitoring test progress tasks in the administering test columns and ties. See the tie test improprieties quick guide and the tie test improprieties PowerPoint on the ISAP portal for, de for descriptions on how to prevent, detect, and escalate test incidents and how the tie test improprieties platform can be used to request appeals for test improprieties. Monitoring test progress is also an important task especially considering additional personnel serving as test administrators and students taking the test either in person or remotely. Check in often to generate reports to track session statuses, verify participation, and see test completion rates. At the state level, the percent completion rates are also being monitored. On the left is the in-person testing, on the right is remote testing. Both sets of data were pooled on Monday the 10th. A few notes on tasks complete after testing. The after testing column in TIDE is used to record appropriate non-participation codes. Reference the table on page 75 of the TIDE user manual for a summary of special codes and their description. A special note on parent opt-out requests. So, as I've noted pr previously, students in grades 5, 8, and 11 are required to participate in the science summative testing for spring 21. Since spring 20 testing was waived, Idaho SDE knows it is important to gather as much data as possible to determine student achievement and address any potential learning loss issues. Nevertheless, parents and guardians may still persist in requesting an opt-out for their child for spring 21 summative testing. LEAs and or school leaders can work with parents to inform them of the importance of gathering student performance data for school year 2021. The LEAs and or school leaders may then decide to grant the parents opt-out request. However, the state will not take the parent opt-outs into consideration when calculating participation rates. That is, those students remain in the denominator unless they were absent during the entire assessment window due to documented medical reasons. If LEAs and our school leaders grant a parent opt-out for a test that has been started or completed, it should be documented in the test incident log as such. To wrap up, the SCE is still planning to administer an operational field test in spring 22 in grades 5, 8, 11. Then after our summer 22 standard setting, SCE will be able to provide individual student reports and scale score. With those updates, are there any questions about science ISAT? I don't see any science ISAT questions at this time, Chandler. Excellent. So I'll throw it over to myself for the updates on the ISAT. To start, just a reminder, the LEA and math ISATs are required in grades 3 through 8 and 10. The in-person and remote administration testing windows both close on Friday, May 28th. Additionally, the LEA and math summatives will be the adjusted form. These adjusted forms will be administered in all grades and to all students, testing either in-person or remotely. For more details on these adjusted forms, see the blueprints on the ISAT portal. With that said, let's go over the student performance data that will be available from the completion of these adjusted forms. No matter if the student is administered, their summative in person or remotely, he or she will have available an individual student report or ISR. Those ISRs will be available to districts and schools to distribute to parents and students. That ISR will have an overall scale score and proficiency level. However, claim level performance data will be available at the aggregate, meaning claim level performance data will be in our reporting system and will be available for rosters of students. So, when will that student performance data be available? I have received that question several times during the testing window. So, just to clarify, student performance data will be available in reporting approximately 10 days after the student has completed and submitted both the CAT and PT portions of the ISAT. So, as we do with science, let's go over the in person ELA and math TA test trees. In the picture, you can see that the in-person ELA and math ISATs are on separate branches. Clicking on the ISAT summative math branch brings you to the next level in the hierarchy. As you can see here, the ISAT math CAT and the ISAT math PT are on separate branches. This allows for the in-person CAT and PT to be taken in different test sessions. The remote ISAT ELA and math summatives are on their own branches. And as you can see here, when you click on remote ISAT summative math, you are taken to the available fixed form. This level of hierarchy is expected 
our testing vendor smushed together the CAT and PT portions into a fixed form. Additional details and models of these six forms is located in the FAQ. Again, FDE's expectation is that most students will test in person, and we, but we have allowed remote administration of summative assessments that will only occur in extenuating circumstances. Remember that when students test in person, the students will have to use the Idaho Secure Browser to access the ELA and MAP ISAT summative. And if remote administration is right for your district and FDE has approved your district to test remotely, students should use the Idaho Secure Browser to access the remote ISAT summative ELA and MAP test. The Idaho Secure Browser provides all necessary security protection. As a last resort, student can use an up-to-date conventional web browser, for example, Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox, on a school-owned or personal device to access the remote ISAT Summit of ELA and Math test. Please note that Microsoft Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge are unsupported browsers and cannot be used to access the test. I mentioned this earlier, but wanted to repeat the fact that all student performance data from ELA and Math Spring 21 ISAT Summative will be available in reporting approximately 10 days after the student has submitted both the CAT and PT portions of the ISAT. To support schools and districts, several resources for the reporting system are located on the ISAT portal, including a guide for how to print ISRs and student data files, and a quick guide for interpreting the claim and target symbols for the Spring 21 ELA and Math Summative ISAT. Additionally, two new parent brochures are available on the ISAT portal. These brochures, one in English, the other in Spanish, provide parents and guardians with guidance on understanding the information in the individual student reports for the Spring 21 ELA and Math ISAT. The brochures also answer a few frequently asked questions and offer direction on where to find additional resources. Other resources relevant to the summative testing on the ISAT portal, those resources are organized by subject, ELA and Math, Science, and IDAA. Included in the ELA and Math folders are the blueprints for the adjusted forms, and a chart that summarizes scale score ranges and proficiency levels. Speaking again of remote administration, SDE has published several resources to support remote administration. These resources will be available throughout the ISAT testing window, which closes on May 28th. As I mentioned during the science section, it's important to note tied tests and proprieties available to DAs and DCs and to monitor test progress for the ELA and math ISAT. See the tied test and proprieties quick guide and the tied test and proprieties PowerPoint on the ISAT portal for descriptions on how to prevent, detect, and escalate test incidents, and how the tied test and proprieties platform can be used to request appeals for test and propriety. As for the state level percent for completion rate, here's the data for in person ELA and math ISAT. This data was pulled on Monday the 10th. Pretty much all the ELA grades as CATs and PTs are near or slightly exceeding 80% completion. For math, a lesser percent completion rate for each grade's CAT and PT. Those are mostly around 60%, and only grade 10 is exceeding 75% completion for both CAT and PT. For the remote administration, both ELA and math are between 80 and 90% complete. Just like with the science, the after testing column in TIDE is used to record appropriate non participation codes. Reference the table on page 75 of the TIDE user manual for a summary of special codes and their description. So I went over this during the science section, but we want to go over it again. Students in grades three to eight and 10 are required to participate in summative testing for spring 21. Since spring 20 summative testing was waived, the Idaho SDE knows it is important to gather as much data as possible to determine student achievement and address any potential learning loss issues. Nevertheless, parents and guardians may still persist in requesting to opt their child out of spring 21 summative testing. LEAs and our school leaders, can work with parents to inform them the importance of gathering student performance data from school year 2021. The LEAs and our school leaders may then decide to grant parent opt-out requests. However, the state will not take the parent opt-out into consideration when calculating participation rates. That is, those students will remain in the denominator unless they were absent during the entire assessment window due to documented medical reasons. If LEAs and our school leaders grant a parent opt-out for a test that has been started or completed, it should be documented in the test incident log as such. Okay, just a few more reasons I wanted to draw your attention to. Remember that practice and training tests will remain available even after the testing window closes on May 28th. 
using a supported web browser such as Chrome or Firefox. Anyone can log in and take a practice or training test. Students testing remotely can also use the run diagnostics feature to test internet speed for taking or administering a summative test. Lastly, keep in mind the important date and secure browsers on the ISAT portal. And with that, are there any ISAT questions? We do have a few at this time, Chandler. The first is, how is the performance on the PT figured in the overall score of the ELA and math ISAT? What percentage of the total score? Yep, that is an excellent question. Uh, we have followed up a couple times with our testing vendor to provide us that information. I'll follow up again uh, so I can uh, uh, include that uh, in the uh, question and answer portion of today's webinar. Thank you. Next, to clarify, when will the remote ISAT results be available? Same as in-person regular ISATs? Yeah, so uh, with the remote fixed form, remember that the CAT and PT are both smushed together into that fixed form. So that means after the student has uh, submitted their fixed form, that approximately 10 days after the student has submitted that, scores should be available in reporting for those remote fixed forms. Thank you. When will interim assessments become available after the summative window closes? Yep, our summer interim testing window opens on June 1. Thank you. When will the parent brochures be mailed out? And I can actually answer this one. Um, I was I got notification yesterday from the printer that he shipped out the far reaching uh, addresses yesterday and will probably ship out the closer ones by the end of the week. And the next question, is there a way to provide a digital copy of results to parents? And I can do this one as well. Um, we have the PDF versions of both Spanish and English on the assessment website under ISAT. And the next, in the parent opt-out scenarios you provided, do we complete the test incident in Just Tide or do we also have to complete an incident report in the SDE site? Yeah, so remember that you're gonna be noting that in the uh, test incident log, uh, the SDE test incident log. Um, remember that the tied test improprieties uh, is if it requires uh, an action on our part. So since it's not requiring an action on our part, you do not have to document it in the tied test improprieties platform. Thank you. Are districts required to send home a hard copy of ISAT scores? Uh, I'll throw that one over to Whitman to answer. Uh, no, uh, so you uh, you do have to submit scores that is or uh, provide scores to families that's in code, but it does not specify the format for that. Um, so you could use a paper format or an electronic transfer of that if you're uh, comfortable and confident that the um, family would be able to access that still. And it looks like that actually answers the last question as well. So that is it for ISAT. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, now I'll throw it over to Taylor for an IRI update. Hi, everyone. This is Taylor for IRI. As you all know, the spring IRI testing window is now open and closes on May 28th. I've been watching those completion rates climb over the last week or so, so thank you to everyone for getting those done. And if you have any IRI questions, please feel free to call or email me at any time. A few reminders. There are a few enhancements coming to iStation in the fall that we have mentioned in past webinars and a new one that I was just informed about. First is iStation application movement to web through WebAssembly or WASM. We've been talking about that one for a few months now. Second is PowerPath, which will be a new user experience for all iStation users. The estimated rollout date has been set for August 1st. iStation has provided an introductory video for Idaho to briefly show and explain the new features up for this enhancement. If you're interested in that video, it has been uploaded to Edmodo and the access code to the course is right there on the slide. And a new, brand new enhancement that I was just informed about is the new educator platform. There will be two main portions to this update. The first will occur in fall, estimated around August, and the second will be introduced in January. This enhancement includes a new onboarding experience, a new homepage, and new ways to investigate data from the administrative side. As with other enhancements coming this fall, we will give you all more details as it gets closer. And another thing to note, none of these enhancements will interrupt the current testing window. We just wanna give you all an adequate heads up. And that is it for IRI, are there any questions? And I don't see any popping up for IRI, so thank you. 
Okay, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us. Our next webinar is going to be at 10 a.m. Mountain on Wednesday, June 9th. Um, you can find links to register for that webinar or review any of our previous webinars um, on the Resource Center page at our Assessment and Accountability site. Um, and uh, you can also register for this upcoming webinar using the direct link that we have available in this slide. So with that, um, if you have any final questions before we wrap up, we'll stay on the line a little bit longer. Um, and as we discussed earlier, we'll also include all the questions and answers um, in the video that we post um, and the um, transcript. So um, those should go up later this week. Um, we just need a little time to make sure the documents are accessible. I did get a follow-up question, Whitman. We haven't received the last two newsletters via email. Are you going to resume sending those out or will we need to get them from the SDE site? And Kevin, I don't know if you have an answer for this, but Dave, I know that Morgan did send out that the newsletter last week, but we have been getting reports that a few people have not received them. So we're trying to figure out what exactly happened with that, with that mass email sent. So we will try to get those that figured out. Yeah, uh, thank you for, for letting us know about that. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. We will certainly uh, continue to send them out via email so you won't have to um, kind of go to the website to find them. So whatever kind of tech issues happening there, we'll try to track that. Down. And I don't see any more questions, Kevin. Okay, with that, uh, we'll close it out. Uh, always feel free to reach out to us uh, anytime if we can help with anything. Thanks for working with us. We know this has been um, quite the year. So appreciate everyone hanging in there um, and uh, working with us to, to manage the assessment process. And if, if you do need to reach out to us, email or phone are fine. Um, and we're, again, happy to assist. So thanks very much. And I hope you have a good day.